All right, guys, today before the hurricane hits here, if it's going to make it to Key Largo or not, we're going to try something we haven't done together yet. A few months ago, we took a look at this 2008 Nimbus Ford Travel in South Carolina. And once it was purchased, uh, the owner discovered that the uh, ceiling lights weren't dimmable. So he asked me if I could come down here and install the dimmable modules on the multiplex system. Now these are the old school Intellitech multiplex systems that uh, Monaco used also, along with Country Coach. And this is the module that controls it. And he purchased some new ones from M&M Electronics. And now these are dimmable. Now first, we'll do a quick overview on the Intellitech multiplex system. These, just like they say, are the output modules. So these actually have the relays on there that turn circuits on and off. While the wall switches are just buttons on a CAN system that tell the controller what to do. And each one is programmed to do a specific function. They're not rocker switches. They have no interaction with the actual ceiling lights or anything else that they're controlling. Now while the location is always different on every RV, here is going to be where the brains of the system is, the control master. It's basically a very low speed microprocessor or CPU and has a low speed clock that each one of these modules gets an address assigned to. While a Raspberry Pi is leaps and bounds more complicated than this, this was pretty high tech for the time. But rather than having software with a programmable interrupt request, what it has is actual dip switches that you can see right there. Now the new ones are dimmable, so there's two more dip switches on it. There's the old one, there's the new one. If we take a look, there's a lot of good information right here on the label. There are six dip switches. Switches one through four are going to be the address. And we're replacing the second one right here, and its address is... Number one is off and two, three, and four are on. I don't know, can you see that? So I need to leave one off, turn number two, three, and four on, and now it leaves five and six. That's where this label comes in handy. Now on this label, we can see X is the off position. And if we look at the switch, we can see where it says on is to the right. If I move 5 and 6 to the on place, none of the outputs will be dimmable. If I move 5 to on, 6 left off, channel 7 and 10, 7 through 10 will be dimmable. If I move 5 to off and 6 to on, channels 1 through 6 will be dimmable. And if I hit both of them to uh, leave them in the off position, all 10 channels will be dimmable. Now on the module I'm going to be upgrading, it looks like it all controls light, so all of them can be dimmable. Since I want all of them to be dimmable, I leave five and six in the off position. So all 10 channels are dimmable. And we can check currently, those are the Dynet overhead cab lights. If they were dimmable, if I turn them on and held the button down, they would start to dim, but they're not dimming. So let's fix that problem. Let's unplug the old one. Of course, right there is the power supply that switches to the outputs. It runs power to this bus bar on overcurrent protection above. Remove the old one. We'll install the new one that I programmed for the right address. We'll connect the 12 volt power back up again. Now this two pin plug is the network connection. It doesn't look like a SCSI cable, but that's the uh, computer cable. While the other two connectors are just the outputs that go out to the lights and other uh, functions. So this should have controlled the kitchen lights. And the kitchen lights are off right now. And turn on the kitchen lights right there. And if I push and hold the button down, it is getting dimmer. It doesn't look like it because they're LEDs, but they're getting dimmer. It should also mean the dinette light right there. It's getting dimmer and brighter. Why wouldn't you want all of them to dim if it's just that simple? Well, sometimes we have a water pump. We don't want to dim the water pump. Often these buttons are used to turn aqua hots or hydronic heaters on, inverters on, or even like visor control for the driver up front here. And all the dimmer is going to do is lower the voltage on the DC side. So we don't want the shades to move slower or the water pump to work 
slower because that voltage is low. Now I do have to transfer the fuse label right here so that the future technician knows what each one of those fuses above is for. And it looks like channel four is a 15 amp circuit. We'll put in right there. And down below, these are just spare fuses. I'll transfer all of those too. And now everybody knows how to put an Intellitech dimmer in and program it. And the nice thing about this is that it's built into the circuit itself. So every LED light will be compatible with it. You don't have to worry about an incompatible LED dimmer at a rocker switch because often those don't work in every situation on an RV. And now we only have one more module to put in. See on the last one here, we control a vent fan. We don't need that dimmable, so we don't want channel 10 to be dimmable. So we'll do channels one through six. So five is off and then six is on. Also, I didn't point it out over here is gonna be the dip switch settings for the address for whichever module you're doing. So I already did A, B, this one's gonna be C, which is why two is off and the other four or the three are on. And we can handle up to P, which is the 16th letter in the alphabet. So you can do 16 modules through this IntelliTech multiplex system. Now these also have built-in diagnostics with it. So the red light's on because we aren't hooked up to the network. All right, so we're connected to the network. Red light goes off. Now these green lights here just indicate that the module is sending power on that circuit. So this module gets that direct 12 volt power. There's 10 individual relays. They go through its own fuse and then output through the actual lights and the harness here to whatever circuit's above. So if I were to turn on a light right here, you can see that LED down below indicates that it's trying to be turned on. We now have bedroom lights on and bedroom lights dimmable. And over here it says vent fan. We don't want that dimmable because that's either going to be on or off. All right, I think with that, I'm done. But to save everybody time and questions, M and M RV Electronics, that's their address, that's their phone number. There's the part number for the dimmable modules. Put in right there.